Hello there, Roger Foster here and today what we're going to do is we're going to clean up one of these pump controls. These are the pressure switches for your, your domestic water pumps and one of the problems that happens is they get a lot of rust accumulation in them and what will happen is it'll start sticking on or start sticking off, usually sticking off. So what I've done is I've already taken the screws out of it and you need a small straight screwdriver be careful not to tear the diaphragm in there when you separate it and you'll see that there's a lot of rust accumulation you take the diaphragm out you take this out and you clean it up in the sink with some dishwasher uh, liquid and uh, maybe even a bit of uh, emery cloth or something like that to scrape the rust off of that and then you put it back in and it'll probably work for a few more years as opposed to spending you know 30 40 bucks I know they're about uh, the different price ranges but uh, generally you're looking at about thirty dollars to forty dollars with tax Canadian for one of these things nowadays and there's different ends on them different attachments some are barbed some are threaded so but I always like to have a spare on hand so I'm gonna clean this one up it was acting up uh, what was happening it was sticking off and I'd have to run down the basement and tap the box with a ha with a screwdriver handle and it would work for another you know two or three weeks and then it would stick off again so sure enough there's rust accumulation in there and that just interferes with its ability to function. Okay, so I got this piece all cleaned up nicely. It's just surface rust on there that accumulates, you know, so it's it's pretty well cleaned up. I just used an SOS pad or some steel wool will clean it up very good. You want to check the hole, make sure there's no rust in there. If there's rust in there, just use a small screwdriver or a drill bit to, to clear it out everything's looking good in there now you take you got to carefully remove the diaphragm here without damaging it so you might want to use a, a very fine bladed or a medium bladed uh, jeweled screwdriver or even an exacto knife it should just be stuck to it it shouldn't actually it's, it's rubber so it should lift off fairly easy and there should be Just that assembly like that and that's what you have now that'll come off that's just stuck to it what you want to do is like I say clean this up use some dishwashing uh, liquid on it check it. you don't want to puncture it whatever you do because you puncture it then it won't uh, stop it'll just keep your pump running so that's one of the more important pieces here right now this thing like I say it's got some surface rust on it I'm just gonna clean it up with a little dishwashing liquid and some uh, an SOS pad will clean that up nicely you know you don't want to work your way through it but it'll take the surface rust off okay we got her cleaned up pretty good most of the stuff was just surface rust on there did have a you will have a hard time like around the edges here because you'll have a heavy layer of rust in there the best way to do it is take it over to a sink and then just push down on the sink there and work it over with an SOS pad or steel wool you'll have to rub very hard on it it's very heavy rubber so as long as you don't gouge it with a screwdriver or a knife or anything like that you know you can rub on it with uh, steel wool SOS pad and clean it up very good I also cleaned off any surface rust here and if you go and look in these holes in this side right there and in this side here that's where that thing rocks back and forth and you'll just take a screwdriver and scrape any rust off there that might be accumulated there and if you want you could take a q-tip and dry it off 
or a hair dryer or even a heat gun if you have electronics workbench <laughs> sitting uh, sitting there and uh, I also took the steel wall to here to take this much of the surface rust off there you know generally speaking when you redo these because the contacts are usually pitted they're not going to last a long time but they will do you in a pinch you know you probably get a year to two years if the contacts are bad if the contacts are good then you're probably going to get about five years before you'd have to redo one again if you really wanted to you could take this all apart but then you have to recalibrate it because that's your your high low cut in cut out what I'm going to do is take the block out there's two screws here that you can take the contacts out to be able to take a look at the contacts and they're pretty heavily pitted normally what I do is just use some emery cloth or emery board in there and just sand them a bit you could use a very fine file you know like I say once you do that you know they're not gonna last but it will do you in a pinch if you don't have one and you're unable to get one for a little while you'll be able to get your water pump back up and working so basically wash that you can take the contacts out or you can leave the contacts in and wash it up good just make sure if you're going to use it right away that you take a hair dryer or a heat gun to it to dry it all out you don't want to leave it and let it rust if you wanted to you could take some a q-tip with some vaseline and grease down in there where the linkages are things like that that rock back and forth you don't really have to yeah, it'll still work okay. Okay, so as we see here, there's been a lot of wear on those contacts. Especially the two that you see on the right side there. So they're all heavily pitted. Normally, I wouldn't even put this back into service. Like I said, years ago, you used to be able to buy these blocks and the contacts to stick in and rebuild these things, but... I don't think you can get them anymore. You know, they want to make more money off of selling you a whole new control when it's not really necessary. Like these things just just snap in there. Right? There's a little lock tab that holds them in. You know. But uh, what I'll do is I'll file these. You know, and like I say, it'll be an emergency spare. It'll get me through till I can uh, pick up a new one or something like that. Okay, so we got the terminal block cleaned up with the contacts and stuff. I got them looking pretty good. Basically all I used is a, a fine file. Yeah, and you uh, just hold that on a workbench and just file it back and forth over the contacts. Clean them up. They will not last like original contacts because uh, the original ones are convex, meaning they come up to a little bit of a dome. When they're filed flat, eventually they'll start sticking, you know, after maybe a six months to a year, they'll start sticking. The other portion of the contacts is in there. I clean that up as well. These ones are a little trickier because you have to hold that plastic piece on the edge of a workbench while you file the the contacts but they're cleaned up good enough like I say this one here is just for emergency use to have a, a backup you know I could probably leave it in service and it might get me a year or two now it's just putting it all back together everything's dried out and uh, that's good so I just used the heat gun there to dry it off. Like I say, you can use a, a hair dryer. I don't like leaving them with a lot of water or anything on there. There's still a little, a little bit of moisture down in there. But I missed that spot. That's good. That's got it.
I just got this thing set for close to 200 degrees so it's not extremely hot and that should be good enough. Now that thing will start to cool down and shut off. That's cool. And uh, now it's just a matter of reassembling everything. Now when you put the diaphragm in, you'll see there's markings on there so you want to stick with this at the same position of the markings. That way there should be no problems with it. It's already broke in at that, that point. So that'll line up with your your holes on the on the bottom side because these points go into those rocker holes like that so that just rocks back and forth and then again this it's got the two side pieces would go like that might even be easier to uh, line it up with this thing and put a couple screws in it first and uh, We'll put it all back together. One more thing, when you're putting this together you will be compressing a bit of that spring in when it pushes on it. So you start with two screws opposite each other and then when you tighten them, you tighten them in the same way. Tighten one there, one there, one here, one there, one there, one there. So it evenly presses on the uh, spring plate. And then once you get all that tightened up, you can put the contacts in. They're easy enough to uh, to pop in. Okay, so the bottom's all tightened up. Very good. And uh, now it's time to put the block in with the contacts on it, which is fairly easy to do. It's got this keeper that goes at the top to stop the other piece from going there. Now this black plastic piece here the back end will go on this side and the screws just go into there so you'll pull that back and make sure that it's in there sitting at that point that it's not too far forward when you do it just like that basically you'll need two hands so I can't do it and then the screw holes line up there and you put your last two Phillips screws in. And that's it. It's done. Everything's uh, back there. Contacts are looking good. They'll just pull apart. The other two screws are, are attached to the motor. So there's uh, tabs on the, on my motor wires. Yours may not. Some of them have uh, a little tab with a push on. You know, different ones use different methods for doing it. And uh, like I say, essentially that's it. I just got to clean up the cover because it's, it's got a lot of crap inside and I don't want to end up having it end up back in there. Okay, so I just cleaned out the crap that was in there, so that's good enough. You may have to readjust your pressure settings. Uh, I'm on a half horsepower jet pump, so I like mine at uh, 30. This one here, you can actually adjust both the cut in and the cut out, even though it's a little difficult. Some of them only have the one setting and the differential is already preset. But uh, if I can get 10 PSI difference, I'm happy. Usually it's 20 PSI difference. Like the last one I put in, I didn't touch it. It came already preset at uh, 30 and 50. So it cuts in at 30 and cuts out at 50, which is standard for a jet pump. If you push any higher than 50 PSI on a jet pump, you're going to be burning the things out or it's going to be running continuously. and very rarely being able to get up to pressure anything past 50. 50 has always been good for jet pumps. If you have a submersible pump I like to set mine at about 60 and to cut out and 50 to cut in. That way there's not as much noticeable difference even with the uh, the jet pumps if you got the patience to sit there and and cycle it and cycle it and adjust the differential to try to get it closer to a 
a 10 PSI differential as opposed to a 20. You know, to me, 20 PSI difference when you're that at the pump, by the time you get to the end of your, uh, your faucet runs and stuff like that, you're probably at 30 PSI going to be down to around 20 PSI by the time you get to the end of your run. So you're probably looking at 20, 40 at the tops if you're 30, 50 at the pump. So <laughs> anyhow, that's it. I'm just going to put this one away. And uh, if I have a problem, I know it's ready to go. So if you're stuck and you're in a pinch and you don't have another pump control handy, and that's how you can uh, recondition one of these, at least temporarily to get you by till you can uh, manage to get another one. So that'd be it, and uh, I'll be talking at you.